So as we saw, pleasure in itself is not bad. What makes pleasure dangerous is that it can make us less human if we indulge in those pleasures that are animal-like and not distinct for humans. So now what we want to do is look at how we can train our pleasures to do our will rather than us becoming a slave to our pleasures. And so the key here is to understand a particular principle that we all know, but we haven't really been conscious of. There is a way to increase desires and there's a way to decrease desires. It's when you understand one thing about desire. Desire is just like a fire. And what do I mean by that? Well, for Aristotle, there are two things about desire that makes it like a fire. You feed a fire and it only grows stronger. You starve a fire and it diminishes. That's the first fact that you need to understand about a fire. Well, what does that mean? Well, the more you indulge a particular desire, the more the desire increases. So, for example, the more I exercise, all of us desire to be healthy. The more I exercise, the more I indulge that desire, the more I create a familiarity with my body, a, 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 <clears throat> a routine that then I come to expect. And therefore, I increase my desire to exercise the more I indulge in that desire. In the same sense, the more I indulge in my desire to eat, it doesn't satisfy my hunger. It does it for a temporary time. But the more I eat, the more I want to eat. And that is because the more calories I need because the bigger I become. And so the more you feed a fire, the bigger it becomes. And therefore, the more it requires. So thus, this is a simple principle. If you want to increase a desire, indulge it. If you want to decrease a desire, starve it. If you want to control a, di a, a desire, you need to put it on a diet. Neither indulge it too much nor too little, but to the extent that you want the desire to motivate you. Our problem is that we indulge or we feed the wrong fires and we starve the wrong fires and therefore our desires are out of whack. And that's what makes us lose our self-control, our sobriety. So that's the first principle. Feed what you want to grow and starve what you want to diminish. But there's another thing about fires that's very important and that is the law of diminishing returns. In other words, as you feed that fire, it grows. And because it grows, it will take more fuel to make it grow even more, or to even keep it at the same level. We all know this. If you barbecue, you know that you have to keep the fire hot. And the hotter it is, the more it takes to keep it at that temperature. In the same sense, the more you eat, the bigger you become. And the bigger you become, the more calories you need to keep yourself at that level. So if you're a bodybuilder and you want to get muscle, then, then you need to increase the number of calories. But if you want to keep growing or keep at that level, then you can no longer use the same amount. And so thus, what desire does is it makes us a slave to that desire. The more you feed it, the more it requires to maintain, let alone grow. We see this with everything we eat or watch. I have a favorite song from Imagine Dragons that I love to hear, whatever it takes. And that song, because I like it, I listen to it. And, but the more I listen to it, the more I grow tired of it. And the more I listen to music, the more I grow tired of that particular music, and I need more variety. With food, it's the same way. The more you go eat out, the more variety you need. The more you eat a particular type of food, it causes pleasure, but now you need more of it. Now you need a greater amount. And so thus, pleasures always dampen when they become familiar. And so we need to indulge with more to keep and create 
the same feeling we had last time, the law of diminishing returns. And so these two things help us understand desire. Desire is dangerous because it can rule us, but we need to allow it to rule us because we can't live any other way. I don't know about you, but I cannot be reasoning my way through life at every point. When I wake up in the morning, I can't be thinking through and deliberating the pros and cons of getting out of bed. When I come and um, talk to a person, to my wife, I can't be thinking before I speak every time I speak. It would make life impossible. And so what we need to do if we're rational is think at the right moments and make the right choices to give in to the right desires. When those desires are aligned with our rational self, then we can give in to them, and then they will make us more rational, more human. So what is the key? The key is don't fire pleasure. Instead, train it. Train it to enjoy what's good for you to the degree that it's good to you, and we're going to talk more about that in a second. But once I understand what desire is like, now I know how to cultivate and indulge and increase my pleasures in certain areas. And I now know how to decrease my desire for things in certain areas. I feed the desires I want to go higher. And I starve the desires I want to expire. And since all pleasure that's natural to us is good, then we don't want to destroy the pleasures. We want to put them on a diet, but we want to feed those things that are going to make us more human. And so we see there's things to feed and there's things to put on a diet. What do I feed? I feed the things that make me more human. The mental pleasures like learning. You shouldn't, Aristotle thinks, curb your learning. You shouldn't control that. You should Cultivate that and make yourself more rational. And enjoyment of learning, therefore, is something that you want to feed. But, and also, the honorable pleasures. In your reading, you read the translation tells you that learning is, is something that temperance isn't concerned with, but also something which is translated as the desire for civic distinction. That's a terrible translation of a great word. The original word is philatemia. And philatemina, phila, we know, means love. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Timia is the word for honor or an honorable thing. And so thus philatemia just means the honorable, the love of things that make us more honorable and more virtuous and better and more admirable people. And so these kinds of things we shouldn't curb. We should feed them. We should indulge them. Because again, you feed a fire, it grows higher. You starve a fire and it expires. So feed these, he says. But put on a diet those desires that make us more like animals, that don't distinguish us from the llama or from the pig. Let's use the pig as our example here. What does a pig want? A pig wants to be full, satisfied, it has hunger, it wants to reproduce, it has desires for sex, and it enjoys what it eats. It has desires for taste. And so what we see is the three major animal desires are sex, eating, and tasting good things. These are the things that are not wrong in themselves, they're natural desires, but we cannot overindulge them. We need to uh, put these desires on a diet. So what is excess? What's too much? What's the diet going to be? Aristotle says we need to understand that excess occurs in two major ways. There are certain pleasures that are just simply dishonorable, they're wrong, and we shouldn't indulge them at all. We should starve those. So sometimes our excess is that we enjoy the wrong things. For example, in our society, maybe too many people enjoy crystal meth, or they enjoy prescription drugs that they shouldn't indulge in because it makes them addicted. 
these kinds of things should be cut off. Enjoying the wrong things destroys your humanity and makes you a slave to pleasures that will lead to immorality and irrationality. And so, thus, a person who is an alcoholic, in, because alcohol is something that can, will master them the minute they have it, then that is something they enjoy that they should not even indulge in at all. They enjoy the wrong thing for them. So for each person, it's going to be different, Aristotle says. He says there's general desire, but then there's particular desire. For example, everybody desires sex. Again, he's talking about normal humans here. So that's general and the same. But individually, people like different types of sex. And so that's not going to be the same. And so just like with all virtues, there are the general principles of human nature that I need to observe, but I need to observe that humans are different from each other. And so therefore, what's good for me is not necessarily going to be good for you. If you have a problem with alcohol, then alcohol is gone for you. You shouldn't have it at all. You should not indulge it. But if you're someone like me, then alcohol isn't bad. Just don't overindulge it. So again, put those desires on a diet. So don't enjoy the wrong things, but also excess occurs even with enjoying good things. Those I enjoy too much. That's the problem. So how can I tell whether I enjoy it too much? Well, here's one way of telling. Aristotle says that what's interesting about the person who is licentious, that's the person who overindulges in pleasure and becomes a slave to their bodily and animal pleasures, that kind of person we can tell has too much when their pleasure is what causes them pain. A normal person, say someone who enjoys dessert, like coconut cream pie, if they have the coconut cream pie, they enjoy it. But if they are prevented from having the coconut cream pie and they're a temperate person, they're a self-controlled person, they don't feel pain. They enjoy it when they have it, but when they don't have it, they just don't have that pleasure. It doesn't cause them any pain. The person who's overindulged and has become addicted is the person who goes through withdrawal. The person whose very pleasure causes them pain. So that if they don't have the opportunity to indulge in that pleasure, then that itself becomes a pain for them. So that pleasure itself causes them pain, and also the desire for it causes them pain. You know that you've indulged too much when your very desire for it is so strong that you feel the Joneses. You feel that not having it, that very urge, is like a whip pressing you on toward that fulfilling that desire so that the desire itself becomes painful and the pleasure and its absence becomes painful. Isn't that silly? The whole point of pleasure is enjoyment. But if you can become the kind of person that the pleasure that's supposed to be enjoyable to you becomes pain and the cause of pain, Aristotle says, isn't that irrational? So that's the first way you can tell that, you've ex that you have excess in that area. The other way is, does this pleasure cause me to either become less rational or less moral or just? So again, let's use the extreme example. Someone who's addicted to crystal meth is more likely to rob a bank. Someone who's an alcoholic is more likely to give up on things that are more important to indulge on the thing that's less important. And so thus, they neglect their wife, they neglect their children, they neglect their friends, they neglect their responsibilities, and they enjoy it, therefore, too much. It makes them less rational and less good. And finally, that leads to this whole question of how much value I attach to pleasures. When I enjoy something too much, it's not because of the degree of enjoyment, it's how good is it? How valuable is it? Do I enjoy a lower pleasure more than it deserves? Do I enjoy, for example, golf so much that it becomes more important to me than a date with my wife? 
If that's the case, then I am in a state of excess because I don't attach the right value to it. I attach lower value pleasures with too much value. I enjoy them too much. So again, here's the crucial thing. Don't fire the pleasure. Train it. Train it to enjoy what is good. And here's the key, to the degree that is good. So what is the self-controlled person? What is the sober person? It's the person that enjoys the good pleasures to the degree that that pleasure is good and indulges in those pleasures that make them more human, i.e. more rational and more just, more good, gooder.